So we have Patrick from NVIDIA today and he's going to show us some cool 3D toys. So what do you have for us? I have a bunch of uh, 3D camcorders and cameras that just were released recently or will be released soon in India. So let's start with the most expensive one maybe. So this is the latest generation of camcorder from Panasonic. Cam, cam, Panasonic has been known to do very good camcorder. What's special about this one is that it has an attachment lens on it that allows you to do 3D. And the way they do it is that if I take this up, they have a 3D lens that can be attached to it. That means that now, if you go out and shoot, it will shoot in 3D. The lens converges into a single CCD and the content can then be experienced with a 3D Vision PC. And we've ensured that the format was compatible with our 3D Vision solution. So it's uh, not cheap, so it's high quality. It comes for approximately $1,400 uh, US dollars. So I apologize, I don't have the equivalent in uh, rupees. Um, this is shipping since October 15th worldwide. Now, uh, next gadget is something kind of in between. It is both a kind of 3D camcorder and a 3D photo camera. The, uh, this is a second generation Fujifilm camera. It was released uh, in September worldwide. And the difference in it is that it can do uh, real 3D images because it has two lenses and two CCDs, which takes two images at the same time. So you can take um, 10, 12 megabits per second at mega megapixel images. The uh, addition to it is that it can also do 720p HD video in 3D. Um, it has two sensors and this content again can be played back on a 3D Vision PC. Uh, the formats are both compatible with our players, both photo and video players. So this is a $499 US dollar solution that is the second generation of the first uh, consumer 3D cameras that was released on the market earlier. It's called the Fujifilm W3. The next one is a little bit more affordable. So if you budget, budget is an issue. You have this new camcorder that was released by Amtech, also released very recently worldwide. This sells for $199 retail, US dollars. And what's unique about it is that it's a stereo camcorder. Uh, of course, it won't have the same quality as my with $1,500 to $1,400 solution, but it is, has many advantages. It's very portable, so you can keep this with you, and whenever you see something, you can shoot it in 3D. And if you have kids, that further would be a nice thing. You never know what the kid's going to be doing, so if you have this handy, you'll be able to do that. Uh, now, coming back to the uh, Fuji camera. Something unique in it is that it actually has, it's probably impossible to see on uh, the video, but it has an auto stereoscopic display, which means that it can view images, it allows you to preview images in 3D without having to wear glasses, I mean, stereo glasses. Uh, how it does it? It's with a special process that has vertical lines in the display that allows, it's kind of a refraction, allows the direct the uh, information for each of the Id images and the different eyes by directing it to a certain angle. Uh, it's a technology that's been there for say, a certain time already and it is improving now to a point that portable devices like this can give you a preview of the 3D content without having to do the, uh, to have to wear the glasses. Now the big question that's going to come out of that is that can I do the same thing on a PC display or on a 3D TV? And there's a lot of people wanting to do this because they don't want to wear the glasses. Uh, my answer is that is yes, it's possible to do today, but is it going to be acceptable as a quality level of quality? And I believe it may not be the case yet. I believe it's going to probably take four to five years before it becomes the technology has evolved to a point where it has a quality that is acceptable for most users to watch 3D content on the big display without the glasses. And the reason why you can do it here, except that in a way that it's acceptable, the screen is smaller, so the artifacts are going to be less uh, evident. And it is also designed for a single user, because as a single user, I can decide the angle that I want to watch this, and I can also decide the uh, distance. So they actually pre-calculate pre a certain angle that would be the distance that most users would be watching this. If I want to do the same thing on a big display, on a PC display or 3D TV, the problem is that there will most likely be multiple users who are going to want to watch the content. And in this case, I cannot direct the uh, information to everybody's eyes because everybody can move and nobody wants to move necessarily the same way. So 
it is a challenge technically to do autostereoscopic displays for uh, multiple users at a distance that is variable. And that's why I'm saying that this is probably going to take a couple of years before we have a satisfying solution, but we, there are smart engineers uh, working on the solution, the problem, and I'm sure they will come with a solution, but it's going to take a while. In the meantime, you're going to do have to wear those glasses, which are designed at least to wear uh, over regular glasses. The 3D vision for glasses, for example, do so. And uh, if you have some of those portable devices, you can experience it without the glasses if you're willing to uh, live with some of the compromises. But those are fun toys and those are examples of showing the technology coming up in the market from multiple vendors. I mean, Fuji, uh, Sony, uh, Panasonic, all companies that believe in 3D like us and are coming up with toys, fun toys, I think, that uh, allows people to just enjoy 3D content. Great. Thanks, Patrick. No problem.